Salam, hello, welcome to Persica, Persian Things. Today's topic, the horse in ancient Iran. I think it's very naive of us as historians to think that animals don't have histories. Well, of course, they do. It's difficult to find out about them, of course. They leave no written records of their own. But, of course, their remains are everywhere, and also reflections about animals are everywhere. Recently, I published a rather large tome. It's called Anim The Culture of Animals in Antiquity, and I co-authored it uh, with my good friend uh, Sean Lewis from St Andrews University. Uh, in this book, which you can see is pretty mammoth, uh, we cover about 800 different species uh, across the ages from ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome, and of course Iran. It's available in good bookshops. There's a substantial section there on the horse in the ancient world. It's easy to write a book about the horse in the ancient world, let's be honest. But here are some of my thoughts about the horse in ancient Persia. It's impossible to do justice to the importance and interest of the horse in antiquity in uh, a short video like this. The horse was such a ubiquitous feature throughout the ancient world, although surprisingly it wasn't introduced into the Near East until about 2000 BCE, which is relatively late, um, given the fact that horses were known in the Eurasian steppes from at least 3000 BCE. This is where they were first domesticated. And of course, it's from the Euro-Asian steppes that the horse was first introduced into the Iranian plateau. Today, in the steppes of Eurasia, the horse is still a fundamental part of lifestyle and culture. And in antiquity, it was the Eurasian steppes that gave birth to the domestication of the horse. And from the Eurasian steppes, the Iranians brought the horse into the Iranian plateau, about 2000 BCE. The more I know about horse societies of Eurasia, the more I can see Persian life reflected in them. There is no doubt in my mind that the ancient Persians were a nomadic horse people. They relied on the horse for their culture, for their society, for their thought processes, their religion, their transport, their warfare. For a nomadic people like the Achaemenid Persians, the horse obviously had a very important political and symbolic purpose. And you can testify to the importance of the horse amongst the Iranian nobility by the fact that many of them bore names with the compound Aspa, which is the old Persian word for a horse, Aspadates, Aspadistes, and so on. The premium Persian horses were bred in the alfalfa-rich pastures of northern Iran in Media. They were not Arab stallions, but hardy little types, known in antiquity as Nisian horses. These Nisian horses especially famous from the area around Ekbatana and Bisatun, have very distinctive features. They are squat and they are short and they have distinctive rounded heads. Nisia was said to have supported some 160,000 horses, but competition also came from Armenia, which was used for good breeding stock too. Cilicia was expected to provide an annual tribute of 360 horses, and other satrapies followed suit. Bactria, Sogdiana, and the land of the Saka also supplied the Persians with tribute of horses, and from the Persepolis fortification texts, we know that there were such things as master of the horse, grooms, and all sorts of people to care for the king's horses. Coinage regularly shows the horse, and on this silver derrick, you can see the very distinctive shape of the Nisian horse's head, and the fact that it is not a tall mount. 
the importance of the horse in warfare cannot be underestimated. It was central to the Persian success in building an empire. These Persians were horsemen to their very cause. And here, in this seal, showing Cyrus I, the grandfather of Cyrus the Great, we see him on horseback, spearing his enemies, some of whom are trampled to death by the horse itself. Silver darics distributed throughout the empire, showed two aspects of kingship. On one side, the king is an archer with his bow and arrow. On the other side, he is a cavalryman, charging with spear in hand on the back of his valiant horse. The coins put us in mind of the tomb inscription of Darius the Great at Naqshid Rostam, in which he says that Persia is a land blessed with good men and good horses, and in which he also boasts, As a warrior, I am a strong warrior. As a spearman, I am a good spearman. As a bowman, I am a good bowman. As a horseman, I am a good horseman. Clearly, the control of horses was something that mattered very much to Darius the Great. These seal images from Persian-occupied Anatolia show cavalrymen using their spears to kill their enemies. And the coloured Chan sarcophagus shows a heavily armoured Persian slaughtering a Greek. From a rare find, a wooden tomb in Anatolia, we have a bank of knights using their bows and arrows on horseback, something which was very peculiar to the Persians. Shooting over their shoulder, behind them, in the so-called Parthian shot, led to many victories on the battlefields for the Persians. This shows how much of a control the Persians had over their steeds. Man and horse together. This seal image of the satrap of Egypt, Arshama, shows him with his horse, united as one, Persian nobility and their horses. Horses, of course, were also used for chariots, sometimes in warfare, but also for grand parades. This is an image of two Nisean horses pulling the great king's chariot, and here is the royal charioteer. This is found on a wall relief at Persepolis. And we have, of course, in the British Museum, this incredible little gold miniature, a tiny thing, showing the great king or a satrap seated on a bench with his charioteer driving four horses. On his name seal, it is Darius himself who is standing in the carriage, shooting lions very successfully too. Companions in life, the horse was also there as a companion in death and its religious imagery cannot be underestimated either. These sheets of gold, part of the Oxus treasure, are inscribed with images of horses. They were rolled up and thrown into the river as an offering to the gods. There is no doubt that the horse played a significant role in religious thought and in ritual. The Persians probably thought that the horse could communicate with the dead, and for this reason they were often sacrificed. The sacrifice of white stallions was very common in the Indo-European tradition. In ancient India it was known as Asmaveda, and we find many of the traits of the Indian practice operating in ancient Iran. White stallions were certainly sacrificed to the god Mithra, but also to individual great kings. We hear, for instance, that Cyrus the Great received the sacrifice of a white horse once every month. Remains of horse burials are common throughout the Indo-European world. But let me end on a more positive note with this beautiful little image from a cylinder seal found in central Iran. It shows a mare suckling 
her young foal in the presence of a winged disc and a falcon? What does it mean? Well, I think it's an Iranian rift on an ancient Mesopotamian theme in which a cow was shown suckling her calf. The cow had little kudos for the Iranians, but the horse was everything. And here it is, the mare and her foal, a fighting symbol for the way in which the Iranians so valued their horses. Well, friends, I hope you found that informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comments box. I'll get back to you whenever I can. Until next time, goodbye. Khodafez.